What is going on, everybody? Bobby Fathom and Eric Sheets Haber. We are back. We've been, you know, we've been at it, Sheets. We've, I think we've done stuff now, like, like what are we at? I guess we missed a week ago Saturday. Oh, I mean, you probably did stuff then, too. You're on weeks of, of everyday DFS content here. Um, well, if I'm around, I mean, you know what I mean? I like doing absolutely. it. Absolutely. No, absolutely. Um, I had a, you know, obviously I had a good day yesterday, for those of you to know, but it was a very disappointing end of the day. Um, the, the, the way that that game ended in New England, and not to mention that if just New England gets the ball in the second, in the in the four, in the overtime, um, assuming that the Raiders don't get the ball and then march down. I mean, I literally was one point out of second, and I was uh, five and a half points out of, I think it was five and a half out of first. So it was a little disappointing to end the way that it did. It looked like 250k or 100k at least were going to be pretty much a sure win, but I guess we'll take we'll take 20k. Another good weekend, five consecutive days of winning. So I can't complain too much, but it's been a been frustrating. Really wanted to get that big six figure score. So a little disappointed, but also happy to have had a good day. That's where I'm at today. Listen, we talked about this, and I've talked about this for a week now, uh, and I brought it up in several several cases. And I'm not going to continue to say this, but I have to just in case people weren't here before. You know, for people that don't believe in streaks, that don't believe in running hot, and don't believe in forget that, forget that. It's very important that when to, to win okay because when you win you then have the confidence to make the plays that are necessary to make where when you're running bad and your guys get injured and your guys get blown out and this 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 you start to get gun shy and and, and things don't 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 operate too well for you and that goes back to poker and stock market and, and pretty much everything else in life and i identified even a week ago that, you know, that Bobby, once he got a little bit of taste of, you know, of, of a downswing ending, a little, even a, even a little five, wasn't even, I don't even know it was a five figure score. It's like close. Yeah. It just, so. it just gives you a little bit of confidence. I even identified it a week ago. You know, I said, listen, you know, Bobby's, Bobby's things, Bobby's confidence is turning around and he's going to start seeing the board a little bit better. And he's been seeing the board great for the last week, pretty much. You know, yeah. I didn't even realize it was five straight days in a row winning, which is basically an, an insane. OK, mm -hmm. um, in, in, when you play GPPs right. um, and when you see the board, well, I mean, it's 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 that includes, you know, make being able to make those low on pivots when you need to and knowing when you don't need to. And because if you're on a huge downswing, sometimes you, it, it affects you what two different ways. Mm -hmm. Sometimes when, when you're in a bad, big downswing, you're like, I just got to play chalk and not take any chances. But other people say, well, if I'm such a big downswing, whatever I'm doing isn't working anyway, I'll just bet to play the backup quarterbacks and you know and, and just and, and just pray it seems, it seems to work for somebody else why can't i uh play guys that are uh, that are that are injured and right. play it like that you know whatever so so i was not surprised to see uh you 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 get deep in something um and uh hopefully the hopefully that continues and obviously hope the variance kind of like in the distribution curve it's yeah. uh, it's your first you know yeah. that, that, you can't really help that too much but but you all you got to do is like if you've seen the board right and playing well that's literally all you can do yeah no thanks man i appreciate it. i totally agree that it does make a huge difference when you start you know you, you start getting some things right and it's not just about like winning it's also about getting plays right and and and, and the chance here the riskier play is being my best plays like literally not because they're low owned lately but they've been my highest scoring plays like the, the Jalen Duran thing when we got onto that before everybody else did you know little things like that they start making a difference to where I was able to talk myself into Ramondre Stevenson in some lineups which he was completely unowned because everyone was afraid of his injury stuff and he didn't even start the game but we knew that once the game got if the game stayed close that he was going to have have an opportunity to go completely nuts and uh he, he nearly went really nuts but uh but the last play of that game, that, separate side note, that is the weirdest end to a football game I've ever seen in my life. I've never well, seen Well, se separate, separate, separate to that side note, and we could go on for an hour, but this whole past weekend has just was just an insane amount of drama, a sane amount of, like, incredible plays, starting with the soccer. Right? And then, oh, God. And then the yeah. soccer who then somehow was eclipsed by the football. I mean, like, and, yeah. and bookending the football was the freaking Saturday, 33 to nothing. Like yeah, the, the biggest, the comeback, biggest comeback in the history of the NFL. And we could, I mean, what, what was the best play of the day? I mean, there's so many amazing plays that some stupid stuff people are going to forget about like that, that amazing interception by, by the Titans where the guy like tiptoed out of bounds. Yeah. That was incredible. Went back to the guy that was, that was sitting there, you yeah. know, like from that to this. And then, and then, um, and then, uh, even last night in the in, in the in the in the Washington game, that dude, this guy from the Giants, this guy Thibodeau, was like an insane defender. I mean, he basically like won the game, you know, single handedly last night. He mm -hmm. kept the guy out of the end zone. Whatever. 
So it was um it was it was a crazy day of sports and 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 really really good performances. Absolutely. So and it's so funny, you know, we, we talk about the NBA. You also would like the NBA, but then you get to the NBA where you just like every day it's like a hundred guys injured and and you have to it's it's people are resting and it's all this stuff. It's a little it's listen for for a for a league that's like just been it grew so well and it's been like just such an awesome thing the NBA. They gotta get their players on the court somehow. You know, yeah, I know. I listen. I know those and their athletes, they're human beings. They need rest. You don't want to treat them like slaves. You don't want to play out there 400 minutes, but you got to get your guys on the court. It's a business, you know? So yeah, that's the best yeah I, I, I think, I think I honestly think that's just on that subject real quick before we jump into the slate, I do think the NBA, they have to, they cannot devalue the regular season as they have been doing. No. I think that everybody in the first round should have only home court games and not have to play on the road because that's like one way that a teams can at least care a little bit about seating. But it's you're gonna have to make a bunch of changes because they they you know their best players playing 50 out of 80 games is is just not an ideal situation. So 50 out of 82. Um. Anyway, so we'll get into it. But I do think that that there is you know it's part of why it's the hardest and it's part of why there's edge in NBA is that it's yeah. you know you have rotating guys and and knowing the the depths of some of these teams is is I I can't complain about it too much because it's been one of the ways that I've I've been very successful in the NBA in the past. Um. So with all that said. Let's get into it. Let's go game by game here. There's a lot of uh, – <laughs> it's a big slate, as it, is, as it often is on Monday. Yeah, but it's, it's, a, it's a stupid slate. It's a one-game slate. It's a one-team slate. You know, you, you got to figure one team out, and it's like the worst team in basketball. It's, it's, it's uh, to figure out, yeah. But it's uh, – you know, well, listen, you got to do what you got to do. But the good thing is there are good plays to make to access if you get those if you get those guys right. Oh, and yeah. we'll, we'll, we'll talk Absolutely. about that a little bit. Yeah, well, before we talk about it, one last thing. Sheets did enter in our Discord channel and the NBA channel uh, uh, contest. Um, Sheets, you want to talk real quickly about that, and then we'll jump um, we'll jump. We'll yeah, jump the um, so it's kind of like a longer-term thing. Um, I want to, from time to time, do a, 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 a contest for a DFS contest for true DFS members only. And, and the idea is to continue to kind of add money to it. Um, so if I make like a $5 contest, I'll add like, you know, a decent amount of money to it. Based on different free rolls, I'll give throughout the month as we lead up to it. Like the other day, I said, listen, I'll give it a free roll in this pick six that I'm playing. It's just something stupid. And I ended up hitting it. So I'm like, you know what? I'll, I'll put that into the into, into the free contest, whatever it is. And um, our first big one, I'm, I'm, I'm aiming towards being the Christmas NBA slate. It's pretty cool because, first of all, even though it's a Sunday, there's no there's only like three NFL games that day. So, mm-hmm. so but and it's all like those three NFL games and, and, and the I presume the, the Christmas NBA slate. So what, what I'm thinking of doing again is for that one, again, to make it all, you know, true DFS premium members um, and we'll add a decent amount of money to it. Um, but for, for now, just keep one looking at the, the lobbies because I want to at least once a night or maybe once every couple of nights, also, also, as long as there's a decent slate, run a true DFS contest for whoever's in the discord. You know what I mean? Like if you're not a premium member yet. Um, but you're in the discord. Yeah. You could definitely get in there. I won't put the link like all over Twitter or anything like that, mm-hmm. but I'll put it in the discord channel. Okay. Mm-hmm. And you could just join. And like I said, I mean, if, if, if it's not gonna be that many people, I guess to start off with, but whoever, if you know, whoever wins, they win. And what, what I'm going to do is as long as Bobby and I don't win, however much is in the prize pool, the first couple of days or whatever, as long as this gets to be too much. I'll add that as like added money to it's like the premium members uh, one also. So uh, I haven't figured ex- exactly out yet. And obviously we probably should have like someone else. Except this, is our, for, this, is our te- this is our testing. Our testing except guy. for me manage it. Like have like. Yeah. Have yeah. Yeah. This, this is just, have, this is just have, the first one. I appreciate you putting it up, but we, I, I can't or somebody it. promote it or something like yeah. that. Nonetheless, look at the discord for that. And we'll, 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 uh, and we'll definitely have some fun with it. Also watch for, more of these live sweat things, which which I really enjoy. And who knows, maybe I'll do it tonight because I'm not going to be available for live. Any yeah. case, uh, may as well just get into it. Okay. Uh, anything here? <laughs> you talk- um, so, yeah, it's going to be a one-game slate like you mentioned, um, which just sort of – I mean, I, I like the matchup for, for Jared Allen. Kevin Love is crazy cheap and hasn't had a game in a while. Um I'm having trouble getting to much else, to be honest with you. Uh, Conley's price is reasonable, but I don't feel excited about it. I think that you're really, really mostly off this one. I have no problem if you want to play Donovan Mitchell or Darius Garland. I guess Mitchell would be my preferred one. But I, I think these, that these guys are all playable. I just don't see it. You know, it is a huge boost, you know, in, in pace for Cleveland. 
uh, just going to be hard to sort of weigh in which guys you want to play with the OKC game. Um, I think Mitchell, Mitchell and Allen are certainly on my list with, with a long shot Kevin Love play possible. Well, basically, the, the thing is, 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 again, is you have this Oklahoma City, in which we will get to, which, which you might end up playing five guys from or whatever it is. And, and it's an incredible amount of value there. But, but the question is, and this is what defines the slate, is what do you play alongside of that value, right? Um, do you run it back with like delivered a summer from Portland or, you know, what of the good plays from the rest of these games are going, are you going to access by playing all these OKC guys? You're not playing the OKC guys for the sake of playing them. You know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. that gets you salary to, to, to play these other guys. So when we're looking at Utah Cleveland, like, even though like nobody from there is a particularly great value, we're still looking at it because maybe we want to play like, uh, you know, I don't know. Marketing and Mitchell or something like that. So just because there's no incredible values there doesn't mean we're not interested in the game. It just happens to be that I don't not particularly interested in the game. <laughs> yeah, I, I do think Mitchell, uh, former team and all, and also with the massive ceiling and a great pace environment, I think Mitchell's probably a Mitch, Mitchell and Allen both stand out to be decent plays. And if you're not playing them, I mean Garland is coming off of what 47 and 56 and two back to back games. It really does feel like it's going to be Garland or Mitchell every night are going to get there in a big way. And um, in this game, I have Mitchell as a slight preference. So yesterday, uh, as we go into Toronto, Philly, yesterday Toronto got blown out at home by uh, by a Curryless Golden State. Um, I shouldn't say blown out. I mean, they they, they got pretty well blown out. Um, and and Ojean and Newby remains out. Um, and Gary Trent was out of last night's game as well. Just as well, because he doesn't do anything anyway. Mm-hmm. Um, but, well, he takes shots that I guess other people could take and maybe have a chance to make. I guess that's that's <laughs> that's one thing. Um, so I guess in this game, I mean, we, we could talk about maybe playing in beer hard because you're going to be able to do it, right? Um, and, and they both seem to be in play. Now, again, the way I like to play these slates is to find kind of, you know, a combination here. So where normally you might say, Ooh, it's kind of tough maybe to play Embiid and say Siakam together. I think you could do it pretty, pretty handily on a slate like this or Harden and Siakam together or something like that. So uh, I definitely do like um, uh, Siakam, especially if you're going to play a stack of some kind. Um, But the guy who seems to be really showing up, I I guess we're back to Malachi Flynn days. Um, Maybe, maybe. Right. I mean, it's he just did come he, in just because of the game where they were playing poorly against a team with a ton of guards. He played. A That's bunch. right. That's right. Yeah. Um, yeah. Cause what had happened was um, cause I actually, I played the slate last night is, is, is Wancho was really popular and, and, and he only got like 22 minutes or something like that, or 23 minutes. He wasn't really that big of a factor. Cause like you said, it was more of a guard, you know, guard heavy, uh, hard guard heavy team. But I didn't expect Malachi Flynn to get in and play all that many minutes. So, I mean, obviously if he's, Look, if 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 Van Vliet is out somehow <laughs> and Flynn starts, yeah, okay. Um, I don't know what to do with Malachi Flynn. I mean, the game the game log is is kind of tough to ignore, right? I mean, 20, 28 minutes and thirty seven minutes in the last you know, yeah. last two games. Um, so I don't know what I want to do with that. Um, what what do you got here? I, I'm stuck on that one as well. Uh, I'm gonna probably decide that one later. I, I really can't quite figure it out. Um, I, it's weird cause I, I, sh- I should like something and, and on a back to back, you'd imagine that they're probably going to, to really, you know, I mean, they, they need to win games. That was kind of an embarrassing loss. There have been a really disappointing team. These guys all play a million minutes for Toronto. It's obviously not an ideal matchup, but like, can we find a play a way to play Scotty Barnes, Van Fleet or Siakam? I think they're all in play. I just don't think anybody is, none of them I'm, I'm especially excited by. Um, but I do like Embiid a ton on the other side. And I think playing one of Embiid and Harden in a good portion of your lineups is probably a decent thing to do, especially Embiid. Um, so I'm very high on the Embiid side of things. Um, and I am just gonna, I'm gonna wait to see what I what I think about the Malachi Flynn. And I know he's been incredibly unproductive. He did play 40 minutes two games ago. I, I will consider Hernan Gomez still, even 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 doesn't feel great, but I don't think he and Malachi Flynn are like in a hugely different category. Um, and Flynn well, they're, just different, they're different positions. They're different players, you know, like, uh, 
Yeah, but logically, Flynn should play less minutes in general. I, I, can't, I think Van Vliet had foul trouble yesterday, or maybe they wanted to play another guard because of Golden State's guards. I actually didn't watch the game, so I don't know. Um, well, Jordan Poole had scored like 45 real life points. Yeah. Um, and Fl- Van Vliet only played 34 minutes, which is really low for him in a game where you're, you're getting killed because usually they just overplay him in that situation. Anyway, all this to say that I, I mostly am on the Embiid side. I'm just going to wait and decide about the uh, until later about the value. I can't decide what I want to do with it right now because we'll right, have to so, we'll have to so, weigh it versus the other great value. <laughs> yeah. So Orlando, uh, Atlanta, you have um, you have De- Dejounte Murray still remain. Well, you might have a chance to come back now, huh? So he's questionable. Um, not sure what to do with that. Um. Not really getting too much here. I mean, a Kong, a Kongu, he was just kind of okay the other day. Um, so if all those guys are out, though, it, like Capella says remains out. Collins is questionable. I mean, again, you have to just kind of wait. Um, I, I, I would imagine that I would prefer like Thomas Bryan at center than than uh, than a Kongu, um, even if. Well, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, even if Atlanta is, even if uh, those guys are out. But, uh, yeah, I'm pretty much, I don't, I don't have too much in this game either. Um, Markel, Markel Fultz has been good. Uh, it is a back-to-back. Maybe maybe he doesn't play. Um, I don't know. I, I think this game's sort of an ignore. Yeah, I don't believe he's played a back-to-back yet. This Oh, no, he did play a back-to-back this season, actually. Um, uh-huh. But his minutes were cut short. Um. I think I, like th- that's how I feel about this. A lot of these guys look fine. I'm kind of curious who ends up actually playing or not. Um, if, if he plays and is a full go, John Collins is really cheap. If you don't want to play a Kongwu, I think a Kongwu is still in play. And if Murray's out, I'll go back to Bogdanovich again. If Murray is not out, um, it's a good Dante Murray matchup. But again, how many minutes does he play on his first game back? Probably plays just fine numbers, but as of right now, for some reason, you know, even with a nice total and a game that looks stackable, not getting to as much of it, even though this is a game that we made money stacking the other night. And uh, m- maybe maybe you just play play Paolo on the other side. And I think that that would be uh, potentially good enough. Um, but uh, but, you know, just everybody, a lot of healthy bodies. And even without uh, Capella, I don't think we have to play a Congo necessarily, but I'm still open to it. I, I'm, I'm I'm I just have Atlanta as a big question mark right now because because of the double back to uh, sorry the back to back for for Orlando and then Atlanta with all the questionables, so sort of up in the air for me. Uh, all right, Nick, what do you got next? Yeah, so Oklahoma City, Portland. The deal is oh. is that there's no um, Shea, nor there is there any um, uh, Josh Giddy, which is comprises like a you know 100 percent of the usage, right? And or Trey and, Man, <laughs> or Trey right. Man, and, and well, Trey Man, I think got got shipped. Um, oh no, my bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah. Not sorry. I just, I meant, I was just trying to highlight that. I know Jeremiah Robinson Earl, like you know, no, Dar- Darius, yeah, Darius, 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 all the Darius, guys who play for them, basically. Darius Baisley as well. Um, uh, it's also worth noting that um, that Pukashevsky in his last game went. To, uh, he had like a he had a cut in his eye or something like that, mm-hmm. um, but he still came back to play after getting it stitched up so and then he didn't close anyway so i don't think it's easy it's so easy to say oh boy you know he would have closed if he if his eye wasn't hurt um anyway um yeah so everybody's everybody's really cheap um including the guy <laughs> the guy i took the shot on the other day the uh the emorori uh he uh mm-hmm. he had came back with yeah he, he did pretty well with the 20 he had 27 fantasy points he had 20 the next day, whatever. Every listen, everybody's in play. Um, but yeah, I have, I have them with nine bodies right now, and I'm not sure that's one thing we're gonna have to double check on, see if they call well, anybody up for this game. Well, I see one, two, three, four, five. Well, those aren't, those aren't real things. No, oh, these guys are all players. The guy I've highlighted, you have yeah, Dort, both, bo, uh, there's J- nine J- guys, Jalen Williams, yeah, Pukashevsky, Kenrick Williams, Isaiah Joe, man, it does isn't there, Muscala, the other Williams. He's 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 not available. I don't think. Okay. Wiggins and uh, and Amorori and and then and, and the the triple Indy. Uh, he 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 he's he's back with the team again. He's available. Yeah. Um, but you're you're probably going to have to play. I mean, 
I, I don't know. You you see you'll see when you run optimals. You see you'll see how many guys you get. You'll you'll get four. You know you'll you'll just get these guys. It's way too much. But I guess like the the moto play. I mean, I guess, I guess Lou Dort's gonna have the ball in his hands a lot. And I guess Isaiah Joe. I mean, I guess Kendrick Williams. I guess those are the three that I would think about. At least would have the ball a lot. But Pukashevsky can obviously. I mean, every listen. Everybody that's on the court here can get forty fantasy points. I think. Um, mm-hmm. So. I, I probably won't go all in on anybody. I'll probably just kind of spread it out because like you said, I mean, anything, anything's possible here. Um, I, I do think that Lou Dort is pretty safe. I mean, safe, safe to play <laughs> 40 minutes. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know. Um, but maybe not even that. I mean, who, who knows? Uh, with respect to Portland, I'll let you, then I'll let you try to deal with OKC. Yeah. I mean, the, the pure play is to just, just play Lillard, you know, and, and to play that ridiculous salary um, and just run it back alongside five OKCs or something like that, or four OKCs, that certainly makes a lot of sense. I'm probably going to do something different, but it's certainly a very pure way to play because Lillard's not going to be played, you know? Um, he might be just because of exactly what I just said, right? Um, that, that That is definitely a way to play, but he certainly doesn't project well at that price. So that's pretty much all I'm getting to on the Portland side. Yeah. Okay. So I think that like, as of right now, it's probably three is a sweet spot for OKC, but getting those three, right. Is going to be really hard. Oddly enough, all the guys who are projected not to start are the guys who are projected the best. Oh God. Uh, <laughs> and there's only nine guys who are, who are available as of right now. Okay. Um, Poku is uh, I think pretty easily the number one. Cause if you don't yeah. have him, he's most likely to have like 50, <laughs> like of any, of any of these guys, Poku, uh, Jalen Williams, Lou Dort, uh, probably the first three for me. But it depends on who starts. Uh, if Wiggins starts, Wiggins would become the priority. If Kenrich starts, he would become a priority. The only one who who I won't be playing is is Muscala. Um, so I, I, as of right now, I'm going to be rotating too. But I do have those guys as my preference. On the other side, um, it is hard to find an, a, a logical run back. Like I don't think Lillard makes a lot of sense. And the way they've used Nurkic makes it hard for me. But I mean, they don't have anybody who can match up with Nurkic. Like Nurkic could have like 50 fantasy points here. So I actually think he might be the the best run back. They have a bad front line in general and they don't have any of their bodies. Like, I mean, Nurkic outweighs Ipoku by like 120 pounds and he's like the, and Kenrich he outweighs by probably a hundred. Like, I don't know who they're going to put on him, but you, you, Yurkic, uh, uh, Nurkic should be able to score at will and have a million rebounds for as long as he's in the game. So I'm going to consider him as a run back um, if I'm going to play more than three. And I will probably have some lineups like that. He's also questionable too, for what it's worth. You may end up getting even more value in this one. And if you have like Nurkic and, and who else is questionable? Um, you have Nurkic and is it Grant who's also questionable? Um, yeah, Grant's also questionable and, and hard as probable. If either Nurkic or Grant are out, we can sort of revisit maybe a Eubanks conversation as a value to run back on the other side because Eubanks is going to be a monster play. Um, but we'll just keep an eye out for that. All right. Next up, we have Milwaukee, New Orleans. Is that right? Yeah, I, I just as we talk about Milwaukee, New Orleans, I just I'll just say it this way: I just think I like Luca more than than Giannis. Um, they're both they're both they're both really expensive, and I just think that Luca just is just he's just getting sixties more than more than Giannis is. I guess you know I, I guess that's the best best I can describe it. Um, and uh, not that Giannis's matchup is is terrible, but I think I think Luca's got a better one. You know, so uh, I don't know. I, I guess I guess Giannis is going to be lower owned as a result of that. Um, but maybe not that much. I mean, these guys are these guys are the same. I, I, I don't know. I think people play both these guys. I have no idea. But um, nobody else on Milwaukee really, really does anything for me. Um, and as far as Dallas goes, I don't. Oh, excuse me. And as far as New Orleans goes. I'm not even gonna say it. So I'm not. just say it. Just say it. Fine. You know what? I'm, I'm gonna show you, right? So, so okay. the, you know, it's giving you the answer already. So, so you know what it says. I want you to to read what it says Joe to the Bell. right of of Jonas Valanciunas. Yeah. What is that thing I'm highlighting? What does that say? I can't read which thing you which right here. Mean? What's that? New what's that say? No, oh, it says ownership. no. It says no. It says <laughs> no. That's what it says. It's telling you not to play him. Okay. You think it's it's based on what you know the team abbreviation is, but it's really just kind of like subconscious. 
my sheets are telling you just no, don't play it. And that's right. pretty much all I have for this. Uh, yeah, as in put up, yeah. Do you, why are people playing Joe Val when he's put up one thirty fantasy point game in his last eight games? And he's, you know, that's kind of what you need at least as a minimum tonight. But meanwhile, nobody has talked to, nobody will play CJ McCollum, who's put up 44 or more in three of the last four games and has a premium matchup. Um, if Drew Holiday doesn't, in fact, guard him the whole time, which with, with Middleton out, I don't think they will put Drew Holiday on him all the time. I think you're going to see more Javon Carter. Um, who's also a good defender, but he's not your holiday. I, I like McCollum. Uh, that's pretty much my my favorite play in this game. Uh, everything else is just sort of, meh, okay, I guess you could do that. Like, Holiday going back to New Orleans, uh, second game back after after missing a few. But I think that the minutes should be solid tonight. So I just think Holiday, is, Holiday and, and, and McCollum are probably the best plays here. Um, for DFS, that's, that's, all, that's all I got. <laughs> Um, okay, so well, you know what? Thing, you know what? Then with Joe Val, let me just take a quick look because uh, we're doing it again, aren't we? No, it's it's worth looking at though whether or not Larry Nance was playing, and he was, um, and he's out tonight. Just worth considering that maybe he's a little better play than than usual. That's all I'll throw out because there. Nance is out. Yeah, I I'm with you. I, I you know I'm down. Ugh, if I do it though, and like my one of my two big buy-ins, I'm gonna kind of hate myself for it. Yeah, well. <laughs> <laughs> what are we going to do? We're going to hate ourselves more if we play him and he scores 20 or if we don't play him and he scores 50. I don't, you know what I mean? I don't that's, yeah, that's that's a good point. Um, um, if, if there's, it's, it's an ownership thing, though, Sheets, right? Like, if he's if he's going to be 20% owned, that's something he hasn't touched in forever. I, yeah. It's kind of hard to talk yourself into it. Yeah. And they do just tend to play Hernan Gomez sort of in the Nance role if, when he's out. So, I don't know. I can't quite get not, – not excited about it. So one thing that you missed yesterday um, with your with your uh, NFL sweat was you missed you missed what you knew what was always coming and that was the Anthony Edwards blow up game. He's sixty seven fantasy points yesterday. Yeah, I saw they scored one hundred and fifty points. Yeah, and uh, and by the way, they left him in for the garbage time. Uh, other people did not get to enjoy it. He they left him right in there to yeah. run, run it up. Um, uh, and this is what he is, you know. He goes say, "What well, was it? Oh, what the hell, man? It's thirty six. What the hell? He's showing twenty eight. Man, it was, is it? He's in, does he not have that ceiling anymore? And then just so you know, and then all of a sudden, whoop, there it is. You know, yep. so that's what happens. And uh, so, I think this is obviously a tougher matchup. Um, but you know, you want to play Luca, you want to play Edwards on the other side. You can certainly, you can certainly do it. But the, the real thing that happened in this uh, that you may have missed yesterday is that Rudy Gobert was 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 ruled out. And Nas Reed started again, and Nas Reed got hurt and was out after like six minutes. Um, yeah. So uh, this could be Nate, Nathan Knight season if if uh, if things fall the way they could. Like if, if Gobert is out again, and Nas Reed is out again, this is what this is this is the reality. You know what I mean? He he played the uh, he played the Nas Reed minutes. He played twenty six minutes, and if he's going to start um, with no anybody right with no with no bigs at all um it's that's gonna be the that's gonna be the deal i think here's an interesting one when's the last time we played i don't know uh, torian prince is a week away okay so didn't say that um who else could even pretend to be a big uh jaden mcdaniel don't need anyone that's the truth he played 34 minutes yesterday it's worth 38 fantasy points um but yeah like you said Dallas has no bigs either, which yeah, they, 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 Wood is a little bit more of a big, but yeah, you're right. He's not as traditional. Oh, Woods loves to put and shoot threes. You know I mean? He wants he's to shoot threes, threes, right? Yeah. And now he's 7,900. No more 6K. I guess yeah, he's, had, he's had the monster games back to back here. No more, no more, no more Christian Wood at, 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 at 6K, though. Yeah. Um, and that's good, then. That's a, that's, a, that's a big jump from 6K to 7,900 in two games. Um, is he a good play? Uh, I don't know. Maybe. So, okay. Go back to Luca. Obviously is a good play. You can get to him. I have certainly no issues with it. And Minnesota, you got, you just got to see who's playing. I think if Nathan Knight starts at 3,100, I think it is tough to ignore if you want to know the truth. Um, D'Angelo Russ, I don't know if you noticed this, but he came back finally. He played yesterday. Yep. Um, he had, you know, decent enough game. Um, again, just kind of a tough matchup. And the other thing, I don't know if you noticed this, 
He had he had he had a we had a return of Kemba Walker, forty two minutes the other day when everybody was out. He scored fifty fantasy points, just like when we did that last year. He's always going to do it. If, if, when there's when they have everybody out, he's always going to and he's yep. always going to get there. I feel like yeah, twenty five shots. Yeah, well, you know, he said, listen, dude, you're never going to start again. I mean, you're going to put in there the whole game, go for it. <laughs> yeah. And he did it, you know? 38% and, usage rate. He has a higher Luca type rate usage rate. And they moved him up from 3,100 to 6,600. 6, <laughs> Just in case it happens again, right? You know, but the funny thing is, if they made him 3,100 again, like he would get played and he would get owned and he'd probably have, we probably would sc- we'd make zero minutes, you know? Right. So, uh, I don't know. You like anything this game? You like well, Luca? What else? You got? I mean, I guess we should we should mention that there's a lot of the questionables are, are kind of important. I think um, yeah, yes. Luca Hardaway and Dwight Powell are officially questionable. I think that I think that they'll play. Um, yeah, I think Luca's pretty not that difficult to get to. I think he's a really good play. Um, I hate this match. I hate playing guys against Dallas. Um, but it's it's it, like you said, you know, and, and it's not you know back to back for a guy who's active and on the perimeter after playing a ton of minutes like Edwards. Maybe not the ideal situation for him. Um, but I'm still, I'm still open to it. Um, I, I have no problem. I'll, I'll take the, I'll take the 38% usage guy on, on Minnesota against the 38% usage guy on Dallas and, and, and see how it goes. I, I actually like Gobert a ton if he plays and I don't think he's going to be limited if he does play. Uh, they, they, they just, they give up, they get beat up down low and the rebounds and you just feel so safe with Gobert's rebounding upside that he's just gonna, he's just gonna end up, he should end up at 40 to like 60 so maybe you just you do a go bear run back with your luca i do think he's he's a really interesting play tonight if he's goes and if not nathan knight is basically automatic i don't know how we would consider it even even with the lack of bigs like they're gonna play nathan knight 25 minutes at least probably and he looked really really good and active he's gonna put up 25 to 30 plus fantasy points so i'm on board with knight if go bear is out always like a big bigs only against dallas um all right Let's uh let's jump over to the next one, which is uh, San Antonio Houston, right? Yeah, you could you could you could play this game. I don't want to play this. I mean, thir- thirty seven hundred Eric Gordon, maybe. Aside from that, I I don't want to play this anybody here. I'm trying to figure out why projections seem to like Vassell as much as they do. I guess is the first thing. Maybe they don't. It's, it's just that the people they think some people are going to play him, and I'm trying to figure out what the logic is exactly. Um, I don't understand why people play these guys. They never get there for their price and people continue to continue to play them. Um, if they let like, when is this, when is the minutes restriction going to come off Sohan? Because that would be my favorite play probably in this game is uh, I, I mean, there, he could be 3,600 for that guy. It's just a matter of how much they let him play. Um, and and they, they've kept him sort of, you think they would be cautious with them going forward. Uh, earlier in the season, he did have some big, some bigger minute games. But if he, if he was, if he, once, once he starts getting up to closer to, to twenty eight minutes, I think we're just going to have to like plug him in and deal with the results of some twenties and some fifties. Like he's, he can put up a big number. Um, I, th- I like the matchup for Shangun a lot, uh, but they've been playing some of these other young guys, and I like Jabari Smith. So uh, Shangun and Jabari Smith, uh, with I- I'm going to look a little deeper into the Sohan thing just to get you know because it's a it's a way to get different with value tonight. Uh, Eric Gordon. You know what I mean? It's just, it's more of a play, a, play, a play I would make on a small slate. You know what I mean? For value, I don't think we need to do it on this slate. Um, but I do, I am kind of confused by the Jabari. I think they were in some blowouts or something, but Jabari and Shangun, I'm sort of surprised their projections are so low. So I'll have to look a little deeper into that. I think Jabari and uh, Jabari is probably my favorite play, I guess, here. Sohan is probably better for another slate. All right. Lakers and Phoenix. Yeah, a couple of a couple of a couple of points. Um, first of all, uh, I don't know if you noticed this, but Devin Booker scored fifty-eight real life points yesterday. <laughs> oh, the day before, yeah. Uh, yeah, the day before yesterday. I think he's uh, yeah, yeah, he was incredible. He just he could do and it. He missed, I think, like his last six shots, and he was at one point like twenty-one for twenty-eight or twenty-nine or something like that with with fifty-six points. Yeah, he could he he can do that, um, but. All right, so you have Nathan Knight, right? But you also have Thomas Bryant. And, and Thomas Bryant is going to do exactly what he did in the last two games, I imagine. You know, get 28, 30 minute, whatever, score 30 fantasy points. I mean, this is kind of kind of what I'm uh what I'm seeing here. So if you got two really good center plays, that's one thing. And then you have the aforementioned Jock Londale is out. So if DeAndre Ayton remains out, 
What do you got? You I think have... he's playing, but uh, but uh, we could we could talk about it. Who Aiden? Yeah, I think he's supposed to play tonight. Oh, I, I have that. no idea. I mean, yeah. it said, I don't know. It's just that if he plays, okay. But if he doesn't play, then there's Biombo at thirty minutes, right? That's that's the uh, that's the story. That's it. So then then you'll have three four K or under uh centers if that's I, I I think it's really unlikely that both Aiton and Gobert sit tonight. Um but yeah you would you would have that situation for sure. It would be kind yeah. of weird. There is a chance though that they would just play Sarich um if he's back because he's supposed to be possibly be back tonight. So it's really hard so, game to, to try and analyze without knowing for sure who's in there. <laughs> well one thing you can analyze is 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 Dennis Schroeder remains cheap at 3800 um and Thomas Bryant remains a very good play at 4200 and you can afford to play LeBron James if you want to. Um, you have um, Devin Booker, questionable. Um, I think he'll play. I think he'll play as well. I guess. And I, I think maybe is this is this the night you're supposed to 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 try to stack guys? You know what I mean? Like you play LeBron with Booker or something like that. Um, you could play LeBron and Thomas Bryant with Booker. You could play LeBron with. Dennis Schroeder and Thomas Bryant with Booker, if you want. Um, just depends on what you want. <laughs> I have LeBron a little bit below as far as pure values, like Luca and whatever. But I don't know, I'm that much worse than Embiid, if you want to know the truth. So uh, what do you like here? Yeah, I think all the Lakers are terribly projected. I think they did a really bad job on projecting them. So I will take advantage and play them. <laughs> um, I, I think that, like, so Westbrook gets taken out of one game that's a back and forth game on the front end of a back to back, and now everyone yeah, that was weird. Made. And it's pretty no, it's, it's going to happen. You know what I mean? You're you got some things gelling the other way. It, it's happened a number of times this year, and then he goes right back to 37 minutes the next night. You know, uh, I love Westbrook tonight. Uh, I think you're playing one of Le- Westbrook or LeBron in a lot of your lineups. I don't know why LeBron is projected. So try to explain them, that part to me. Like, I mean, unless you think that unless the Suns just kill them. Why is LeBron projected for less than 50 fantasy points? I don't know if he's got a game with less than 50 with Anthony Davis in years. Like, no. I just don't understand it. Um, so I, I will I will be the guy who plays Westbrook, uh, some combination of Westbrook, LeBron, Schroeder, Bryan. I'll play two of those guys in probably a good portion of my lineups. I just think they're all still too cheap and there's value, there's value in getting them there. Also, keep in mind by playing these guys in a later game, you also still might see some people sitting um, and you don't know who that's going to be yet because – um <clears throat> for the Lakers, it is a back-to-back and a high scoring game last night. So if you get some weird late news playing these later games could be valuable. Um, but I, I do like LeBron and Westbrook, and I love Thomas Bryant. Um, Schroeder would be the last guy I would get in, but I, I do have some interest. I just want to point out that Patrick Beverly is back and he was not there last uh the other night when when uh or yesterday when when uh Schroeder played uh well, I guess he played 30 minutes with him too. Um I, I Booker's fine. Uh, I think it's because I'm playing these other guys. He's he makes sense as a run back. I don't think this is like what you're supposed to do in general. A guy get you know Booker is a, is a, is, a, is a, you know a, a heat check guy. Like he's he's gonna go off when when they're when they're fully healthy. You know he he didn't score thirty fantasy points his previous five games, and now everybody's gonna plug him in at ninety five hundred because he goes nuts. He's gonna always have that ability to go nuts. But you should be playing that at lower ownership or on a. I don't know. I just I'm having a hard time talking myself into it. Like. I feel like his median his median score is not necessarily that high. He does have like a a, a, a love to play against the Lakers thing. It's a good matchup and all that. But I don't think that like ninety five hundred. This is like a play we should be going out of our way to try to make, unless maybe you're trying to stack the game. Just my so opinion. so. There's a lot to like, but but he didn't like, he any, didn't of that. like any of that. Um, you have a return of maybe must see TV from from Sacramento. Um, where you have, uh, well, you have Fox and and Sabonis on the Sacramento side. And if it's not bad enough that you can run back LaMelo Ball like really easily, you also have a, I would say, doubtful Terry Rozier. Um, he played like two minutes, then came out of the game with like a hip. You know what I mean? Like yesterday. So I, I think he's out. Yeah, so... The only issue among yeah, among others is they could get run out of the building. I mean, in 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 fine style here, um, Charlotte. Sure, but I'm gonna have to try it. Um, so Lamelo on the Charlotte side, and maybe I'll let you talk me into PJ Washington or somebody like that. Also, 
it's got to be someone else if, if Rozier is at is out of the game. Not that PJ Washington is the guy that's going to replace Terry Rozier, but talk about that and Sacramento. I mean, you'll play one of the two, Fox or Sabonis, and and uh, you know, have some fun until you know, have some fun in the, in the late night hammer, which is very very hammerful. I'll say that. I agree with you. Like this, I think this is what you're supposed to do. I think this is the optimal thing. Is is the Fox Ball Sabonis is a, is the where you want to spend your money? I think. Um, I, I I'm totally confused at the ownership projections on like why 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 aren't people like Sabonis is an interesting one versus uh versus a guy like 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 Booker tonight. Sabonis is is going to get somewhere between forty something and sixty something. Um, Booker you could put that number in the twenties and up to seventies maybe, but I, I think Sabonis is probably the better play. Obviously it takes up a center spot and we have, we're short on those. So it's a little trickier, but I do think that trying to get, you know, one of Fox or Sabonis or both in with LaMelo on the other side and like the nut matchup for both those positions. Yeah. I think is probably a really good idea to do. Yeah. Um, and I think that what you do, what you can do if you do that, if, if for any reason you hear any Laker news, um, cause if there's like a game, you're going to sacrifice a back-to-back then heading to Phoenix after a, a one, you know, playing in a 120 to one seventeen game or whatever last night. Um, maybe this would be the one you, you kind of sit LeBron, but I'm not saying it's going to happen. I'm just throwing it out there that it gives you options if you play these other guys and you can always switch over to the Laker guys if you like them better. The only so. the only thing about the Sabonis play is, again, it's at the center position. That's right. Yeah, that's the problem. And, you know, it's center only. So we already talked about possibly needing, needing whatever, uh, having the ability to play Nathan Knight and or Thomas Bryant. I don't think Nathan um, Knight is like, I, 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 to me, that's, I'm just pretending that's not even a thing until it, unless for some reason it becomes a thing. I think it's, it's, it's only a thing if Gobert doesn't play, which from everything I've, I've looked at while we've been doing this, I think that he, he right now on track to play is the last thing I read on a tweet. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, but, but yeah, so, that looks pretty good with the, with the, with the OKC value, right? That, that, yeah, that's a nice I mean, little build. Seems good to me. Right? That's like, yeah. I, I like it a lot. I mean, that, that's definitely going to be what some of my lineups look like tonight. Yep. The only thing is, if, like you said, we get extra value at center, it's going to be hard for me not to not to at least consider it. Um, the the, the well, Nathan Knight thing. You put, you put well, you put some bonus into here. You know, you put him in. Yeah, and you play Bryant in the in the other spot. And then and then the Nathan Knight. Oh God. No, no, I don't think Nathan Knight. Let's, let's not worry about Nathan Knight yet. Can't worry about Nathan Knight unless it comes up. I, I, I Chita, I'm trying to, I'm trying to talk it out of existence. I don't want it to. Yeah, 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 yeah. Instead of putting it into the universe, we're trying to suck it out of the universe. Okay, very good, very good. Um, so I've got, yeah, I've got my list of priorities. I think OKC, you're looking at two or three minimum. Um, I think with the Lakers by the end of the night, you might be having to play somebody because it, it just, they're an old team to to have guys on, on a back-to-backs uh, in general. But uh, I, I think Thomas Bryant is your next priority after the OKC guys. I think that Le- I love the LaMelo, Fox, Sabonis, Westbrook, LeBron guys to spend money on if you're not going to play Embiid or Luka, who are my priorities. And then the other ones who are sort of in the mix for me, but not priorities, Booker, McCollum, Nurkic, Shangun, a Kongwu, the Flynn Banton stuff in Toronto. I'm just going to have to wait to see who's starting and then decide what I want to do there. I'm open to the idea of playing Flynn. I have a feeling they might change the starting lineup because they just got crushed at home by Golden State. Um, so I'm kind of keeping an eye out for that. And then you have Donovan Mitchell and Jared Allen. So I know it's a lot of names, but it's the first look. Those are the guys who are highest on my list. And the, uh-huh. and the first names being the the Lakers, the, 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 the Fox Sabonis, LaMelo on the other side with Thomas Bryan and then OKC. That's the main thing. You know, the other, um, the other uh, center that we talked about earlier that, that kind of get left out in the work, left out in the woods. Boy, if he, if he does it on a day like this, where you have to play these other centers, if, 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 if Valanchunas like smashes yeah, on a day where you, where you kind of have to play other centers, that would, that would be particularly trolling. I mean, Interestingly, like, uh, though, I don't think anyone's viewing the center position the way that you are right now. I think the only one who's really projected to get ownership at center is Thomas Bryant, right? Well, and, and, and Sabonis. Valanchunas. That's Sabonis, you don't think? I don't think Sabonis is going to get much ownership. Yeah. I'm just, I'm just, just an early guess. I'm going to guess like 15% yeah. maybe. Because everybody, everybody's, everybody's getting up play Nathan Knight. They're all, they all have got the night, the night stuff going on. What watch Gobert play and Knight put up thirty five or something? That's what it's, that's, it's. It's the night slate. That's what yep. it is. It's, 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 it's the night slate. That's yeah. It. The one thing I wouldn't be doing is playing Muscala. 
That's the one thing. Well, I'm... well, well. Hold on a minute. It's, that's that's the other, the other point. So, Muscala on OKC would be. I'm mean, looking at these center onlys that we talked about. Like Sengun is just not going to make it for me. I don't think. Um, and Valanciunas is earlier. Is Valanciunas yeah. earlier than the the Nathan Knight? No, it's the same. It's the same time, right? Okay. Yeah. Um, um... I mean, there's a lot of good. There's there's definitely some good plays at, at, at center today, but it's it's. I have the slate. Really Akong, Akongu has to fall. Has to fall, right? If 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 let's uh, so what happens if they announce that Jane that 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 John Collins is out, right? John Collins is out. Gobert remains a game time decision or something like that. <laughs> yeah. Aiden, Aiden remains a game time decision, right? So like, who plays Akongu? I don't know. Like, yeah. No, I hear you. Um, also, you have Luca is questionable too, for what it's worth. So, yeah, that's, and Devin Booker and and uh, Dejounte Murray. There's just a lot of stuff going on that, that yeah, I'm feeling. Let's, let, listen, let's just big tee it up. We'll stack the Utah Cleveland game, you know, and then just you know. I don't think post, it's actually a bad idea. And then post that we're in first place. <laughs> yes, yeah. and, and uh, not not even cashing. <laughs> well. um all right well it should be a fun one i'll be live guys at six eastern um sheets it's too bad not to have you today because this is going to be a tough one to figure out but hopefully we have some good results anyway and hopefully uh we can uh we can find a way to get some more more true dfs uh stuff going on in the discord like we had last night because we had a lot of guys do pretty yes. well in this football okay. hopefully we can keep that rolling congratulations to you guys and hopefully we can get a big day in nba today so good luck everybody okay hey hey bobby